afternoon. Um, please put your hand up if you can't hear me. Um, I'm not used to speaking in, um, to such a large audience. In fact, the last time I was on a stage and this many people were watching me was in a nightclub in Leeds, but we're not going to go into that. Um, we won't go there. First of all, I would like to stress that I am not the expert when it comes to um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. But what I feel that I have a specialist interest in trauma and CSE. And I want to talk to you for the next 10 minutes about something very dear to my heart, about how sometimes that diagnosis is the wrong one. I could challenge some of you over the next 10 minutes, and I may leave you with more que questions than answers. If that is the case, I feel I've done a good job. Um, but please don't put your hand up at the end, because I probably can't answer your question. So, now I've got your attention. What I would like you to do safely, I'd like each of you to think of a trauma you may have experienced as an adult. So if you can think about that trauma that you may have experienced as an adult, I would like you to think about how did that make you feel? Were you as nervous as I am at the moment with my anxiety levels going through the roof? Who did you go to to support? Did you go to anybody to for some support? When did you go to somebody for support? Who did you go to? And what did you talk about? Did you go into any detail around that trauma? I would probably think that you did talk to somebody about that trauma because as adults we find it much easier to talk about things that we're going through. That's probably because that person you talk to about that trauma, you had a positive attachment to. Positive attachment means, in short, we trust that person. We trust them with anything that we have to say or do, and we will not be judged. I'd like you to think now of a child that goes through trauma. Sometimes children don't have that positive attachment with their primary caregiver or family or friend. So who do they talk to? It's quite prevalent, especially when we talk about boys, because boys don't talk, do they? They are told from a very early age not to show feelings. So let me talk to you about some of the signs that a child who has gone through CSE, Childhood Sexual Exploitation, which, can I just remind you, is a traumatic event. Let's just look at some of the behaviours they will demonstrate. So when we're working with young people one-to-one, -one, they have already demonstrated hyperactivity. They appear to not listen. They appear to be dissociative easily distracted, lose things, forget things. They will interrupt you. They will always be talking, but not really making much sense. They will have a very low self-image. They will be easily frustrated, forgetful, and probably not sleeping very well. That is a child who has suffered trauma who cannot talk. So behavior change is key. Why am I talking to you about this? Because actually, here in the UK, we are so far behind on the research of the connection between ADHD and trauma. Currently, we are working with seven boys, four who have been referred to a GP around ADHD. Three of those young boys have been put on medication. Have a guess. How many of those three, the behavior has changed through medication? Any guesses? Absolutely zero. So why is this happening? I think it's happening because parents, and I'm not blaming parents at all, but parents and primary caregivers are sometimes very reluctant to identify with trauma, particularly around 
child sexual exploitation. Sometimes parents and primary caregivers need a hook in which to hang their coat. They do not want to acknowledge or can't acknowledge that actually maybe they can't identify with that trauma. And that actually maybe that child is at risk because of the home life. I'm not saying at all that all children presented in front of a GP with the signs of ADHD don't have ADHD. But what I am challenging is that actually sometimes there's a contributing factor, which is trauma, that will alter the child's behavior. Remembering behavior change in children is key. Something's wrong. One of the hallmarks of trauma is that a child will go into hyperactivity. I'm just going to list you some of the um, traits um, that is recognized by, by medinet.co.com um, of the traits of an ADHD young person. And see if you can see if there's any parallel similarities. The appearance of not listening, failing to complete tasks, avoidance of activity, losing things, easily distracted, hyperactivity, restlessness, fidgets, interrupting, always talking but not making much sense, trouble paying attention, low tolerance, frustration, poor self-image. Hmm. Is that not a child, or could that not be a child who suffered from some trauma? It's also recognized that boys, um, in a recent study by the National Center of Biotechnology, actually states that multiple episodes of trauma, particularly in young boys, makes stronger behavioral issues, particularly around sexual abuse. Um, so. The findings of that is actually the importance of exploring childhood trauma when looking at ADHD. And it could be something as simple as GPs asking the parents to leave the room while they chat with the young person. Quite often, if a young child does not feel he's able to speak up in front of their parents, they won't do. Remember I asked you to think about a trauma experience you had gone through as an adult. Did any of you not talk about that? And if so, how did that feel? Because that's how the child feels when they are un unable to approach and talk to somebody. And a big motto that we use at, at Basis Yorkshire and Time too is, say something, it's not your fault. And that's really, really prevalent when working with young people. Um, another study by the National Tra Child Trauma Traumatic Service, actually, and I'm going to read this because this is quite prevalent as well. They explain how symptoms can overlap as well as summarizing some of the differences between the two, describing how child traumatic stress can sometimes be mistaken for ADHD. Thank you. Because of the overlap, sometimes the trauma isn't recognized. But by understanding these differences can help parents and professionals to work together to treat the child appropriately and more effectively. And remember, seven young people we are working with, four who have been sent to their GP for an ADHD diagnosis. Three were put on medication, and not one of them, it changed their behavior. Only through one-to-one -one support work and therapy is that able to overcome that risk. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can we have any questions? No? No, no questions. <laughs> I don't know. Does anyone have any questions at all? No? Great. You're good. <laughs> you have? Hi. Hi, yeah. Um, I was just really interested in what kind of, uh, sorry, in what kind of, uh, what the difference in the methodology of working with these young people would be once you have ascertained that their behavioral 
um, the, their behavioural issues, shall we say, are based on symptoms of abuse as instead of just ADHD. So as someone who works with children with ADHD or, and also a lot of at-risk, very vulnerable young people, I just wanted to know what you would recommend once you've gone, OK, right, this isn't just because of this. Do you see what I'm saying? Thanks. So that's actually our day job. Um, and I think the difference is it's... Um, it's holding that child therapeutically. One of the feedbacks we have quite often, because we, we regularly um, chat with our young people about saying, you know, how is the project making a difference? And the one thing that comes up all the time is that we're not professionals and we're there day in, day out. It doesn't matter if they've gone missing for 72 hours or for seven hours. We're non-judgmental. Um, it's all about empowerment as well. We never say, um, we very rarely mention the words exploitation, coercion and control because they don't see that. Um, and it's about empowerment from then to change. So there's no right or there's no wrong. So if they have gone missing for seven hours, we don't say that was really naughty. Uh, and that was really bad, we, we work at it in a completely different way. Yeah, and it's about an, a holistic approach as well. And whilst we're the specialist in CSE, we're not the specialist in addiction. Um, so it's a multi-agency work as well, which is really, really important. But the key is because, as we all know, children will challenge you. So uh, NFA, they don't turn up, um, but we're, we still go. So we still knock on the door. If they don't want to see us, we walk away. There's no box for them to tick. Um, and it's about holding that. You know, they'll tell you to go away, but not go away, but in a completely different way, in a really rude way. Um, but then you rock up the week after and it's like, oh, but I've just told you to go away. But, oh, OK, I'll tell you to go away again. So it's persistence as well. Thank you so much.